do this thing towards the end of the podcast that we call close but no cigar and what it so i can tell by your facial expression you kind of already know what i'm talking about uh just by saying that but what's that one encounter that you've had whether that be just an encounter or a missed shot opportunity that still haunts you to this day um well i don't have just one but i have a lot of them <laughs> well, i got a lot too <laughs> if, you, if you guys don't mind though maybe it's not a personal one but i'll tell a quick story about guiding that just haunts me sure. um so crap on someone else we get it <laughs> <laughs> i got tons of missed times where i was uh, messing to guard. But anyways i had this buck i called goliath um although i didn't know the buck at the time uh but i had a client in this spot um and uh he it was about probably about 3 30 i was just in the area a lot of times when i'm guiding i'll i'll just stick around a certain area in case they need me um but i'm not usually physically with these people and he was in a he was in a ladder stand and it's about 3 30 he radios me so steve um i'm ready to get down it's like i and the guy hadn't seen a, a deer all day i mean that is really hard like he got in there about daylight sat in that stand all day and nothing and he's like, my back's hurt. And he's like, you know, but I'm also thinking like you've hung in there all day. And then what I found in our gun season, this was gun season. The best time is always the last hour. Your best chance to kill a buck that time of year, that post rep period is that last hour. Some of them will get up out of a bed and start to make a move. But I'm thinking, well, I mean, it is what it is. That's where sometimes maybe I have not said what I needed to say and I'm a little more passive and just try to be more understanding to the hunter I'm like I don't want this guy to be miserable he's tired I'm gonna go and walk him out so uh, I was like all right I'll come his name was Mike and uh it was probably near about four o'clock by the time I got just about to him but I peeked up over the ridge real quick just being careful anyways I, whenever I'm walking to a client if I have to walk him out I'm very careful just in case something might be there. There's always that chance something's in front of them. So I kind of peek up over the ridge and I look and I just see this absolute giant buck. And it was a buck, once again, I named him Goliath. It's the first time I ever put my eyes on him. And Goliath is 80 yards from my client. And I can see all of the ladder stand, all of the stand. I see my client not sitting in it, but yet I can see about three inches of the client's orange hat He's sitting on a log and the way the terrain is, if he, if you just get down enough, he can't see the deer. He can only see like 30 yards, but if he's in the stand, he could see that he could see 150 yards. Like I'm sure, you know, from hunting mountains, how that can happen, you know, with terrain and that. And I'm watching this buck just feeding on acorns and literally there's nothing I can do about it. I'm desperately like wanting to tell Mike if I, if I can, uh, if you just only, only sit up, you know, you'll see the deer. So I turn the radio on and Mike turns his radio off. So literally there's nothing I can do. I'm like absolute giant buck. I mean, 150 class is what, what the deer was that year. And that for here, that's a giant. And uh, I watched it for like 10 minutes and I'm even thinking like, man, if I only had my tag, like I could smoke this thing. So Finally, I uh, was like, I got to at least try something. So I tried to back down off the hill and I got away without it seeing me. And I was going to circle and try to push it towards Mike. And as soon as I got to where around the point and came up over, it saw me and it must it literally had that sixth sense. It knew that like Mike was there and it went the complete wrong di direction and I walk up to Mike and he's like, he's a little bit disappointed. Like, man, what took you so long? I'm like, Mike, you don't realize what was in front of you. And he's like, what do you mean? I was like, Mike, absolute giant. Like literally, if you were in the stand, you would have killed that thing. He's like, oh, come on, man. I was like, Mike, I'm not lying, man. It's like, that's why I'm so late. I, I watched the deer for like 15 minutes and then I did a big circle. And to this day, I still don't think... Uh, although I, Mike hasn't come back in years, um, he did kill a buck that year, a smaller buck, but like, I don't think he ever believed me, but like, literally, like, that's as close as you can get. That's as close. I did as much as I could do. And I'm not taking any credit, but literally if that guy would have probably stayed in that stand, who knows, another 10 minutes, but instead he got down and sat on a log because he just, he wanted to get down and stretch. And I don't think he felt like climbing back up in that stand. But like, 
that's as about as close as you can come and not getting the cigar. In my <laughs> huh. Oh my gosh. So. That's yep. awesome. I, I heard a story the other day of a, a same thing with the elk thing. A guy fell asleep at a water hole and his guide <laughs> checked his trail camera and he said, did you see any bulls today? And the guy said, uh, uh-uh, I was awake all day. I didn't see nothing because he walked up on the guy completely asleep. He checked the trail camera in his trailer and he said there were three bulls that hit the water hole. And that guy was laying down on the ground asleep. And honestly, like, man. I, I, honestly, that that's another thing. I can tell you that that's probably happened at least three times that I know, probably more. But the fact is, like, there's almost always a trail camera where I send someone and like I'll be pulling like this time of year, I'll be going back through cards. It's like, wait, what, what? If he was there, how did this deer show up? And it was, it's either the guy falls asleep or what I've also found is sometimes a lot of guys will leave early. They might even run the town or something. They, they're too afraid to admit it. They, they might literally sit there two hours and then they're done. Like we, we had pictures this year of, of, of a really, really good buck, like a five-year-old, probably high 130s. Uh, client gets down out of the stand. He's supposed to said he was going to sit there all day. And then like an hour and a half later, this giant comes by. You see the client already went by on the camera and the buck comes down the same trail. Like, it's just crazy. I mean, that I totally know what that guide means. And really, like, I probably have more guiding stories because you're talking hundreds of people over the years versus just myself. Like, I've literally seen it all. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> awesome. 